welcome. It's the Git Credentials Binding Project. Uh, and this is the 2nd of June at 7.30 a.m. India Standard Time. Thanks very much for being here. Remember, we abide by the Jenkins Code of Conduct. Uh, so agenda topics, I had questions from the last meeting. Uh, tasks to update Jenkins.io with a more detailed project description, and then how things are going with private key with passphrase. Uh, how things going private key without passphrase and username password binding prototype on Windows. Any other topics for the agenda? All right. So Rishab, you had mentioned that you had some questions. Are there specific topics you wanted to? Um. Yes, they are around um, the conversion into pen format of the OpenSSH private key. Around, I, I just have a few questions around um, this uh, topic. Um, so by that, you mean this, this material here yes. and decode? Okay, yes. so that's probably best for Harsha to answer rather than for me to attempt to answer. Hmm. And yeah, that should be okay. Yes. So, um, so should I ask or um, are we defining? Yes, the, yes, the, go ahead. Yeah, so, okay, so um, uh, I was reading about um, uh, open SSH private key, and um, so I understand that we, we want to convert it to a PEM format. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, we want to connect, uh, convert it into a PEM format because we know that uh open ssh uh versions are not uh, bouncy castle api does not support uh different open ssh versions so we want to standardize that by converting it into a pem format is that correct mm, yeah i mean open ssh gener now generates keys by default in a new format that is proprietary uh, so and uh, the bouncy castle api only supports pem format although there are a lot other formats but uh, bouncy castle only supports pem so the conversion part has to be specific on the pem format okay so um so my next question is that uh, and i'm not sure if this is the right one but my limited knowledge with them is that I've always seen certificates, uh, primarily .x509 certificates, the PEM formatted. Uh, and, uh, and about private keys, what we're trying to do here is that we want to, um, if, if we're talking about an open SSH encrypted private key, we will try to decrypt it and then convert it into a PEM format. Is that what we'll, we'll do? Uh, no, decrypting will be like uh, when the uh, SSH private key is uh, crypt encrypted by a passphrase. So okay. it will be, mm -hmm. we, what we are trying to do is encode it into another format. We won't be decrypting it. Decrypting would be something like uh, showing the underlying structure of that key. It is in uh, ASNI.1 something, but open SSH don't support that. So, so your question, when I was looking at the question you had in your chat, you were saying that to convert it into pen format, you need two things and that is the encryption algorithm. And you mentioned one more thing, right? Uh, format type. Format type. Hmm. Yeah. So, so, yes, so SSH key gen does not, can, does not output, cannot output PEM format? No, yeah, Mahat, you have written the command, right? It will, this command hmm. will output the PEM format, but if we don't use the M option, uh, then it will not. It by default, it will output in a new open SSH format. Hmm. 
Yeah, that's correct. I I was just I was just trying to understand what the process is there and why we are doing that. I I was also looking at how this could be done and yeah, this command can do it and we can convert it into web format. But are you? Uh, I wonder if you're asking a similar question to what I was asking uh, in the doc. To my understanding is we're trying to decrypt the. We're talking about a passworded key, right? Or passphrased um, key. Yes. Yes. So I think my understanding is the reason we want to decrypt it and then re-encrypt in another format is so that um, we don't have to pass a key with a passphrase down to get CLI so that we have to like do terminal dance stuff. So this will convert yeah. it to one without a passphrase and then you don't have yeah. to worry about the terminal prompts. Did I get that right? Yeah, yeah that's one reason also we don't have to create any additional file for storing the passphrase as well as it will be decrypted so there's only the key and there's no need to use the passphrase. Okay, yeah, it makes sense too. Okay. Go ahead, I think, yeah. Yeah, I think um, that's, uh, that's what I need to ask. I mean, it, I'm, I'm a little bit astonished actually that there isn't a trivial way to convert an open SSH private key um, in Java, but I gather that you've searched and haven't found any way to do that. Oh, well, I, so is that, was that question for me or for us? No, no, it was for, it was for uh, Harshit. Yeah, okay. Sorry, Harshit. Mm, yeah, Mark, I, I looked in, I mean, I looked for in Bouncy Castle Java Docs and JCA Java Docs, but I couldn't find much information on that because the format they support, uh, mean the, the functionality they provide is basically around the algorithms. They first, we need to know the algorithm encryption algorithm we, we have generated the key in. If we have not been able to figure that out, I mean, we won't be able to perform other operations. Okay, yeah, I just, and I see a, a, what looks like a commercial implementation called Maverick, but yeah, I don't see any open source implementation. So yeah, I, I just, that's that's really quite impressive, but I think you've you've hit it. That's so. Um, I just wanted to share a small thing here that um, uh, I have one strike of. Am I on mute? Oh no, sorry. So I, I have one strike converting uh, RSA encrypted private key into uh, a PKCS8 format private key programmatically. And uh, so I, 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 I checked that code once. I was looking at what Harshit was saying that we need the algorithm as well. And I, please correct, yes, I, um, that's, but I, I'm not sure if, if it requests two things, the, the only thing I remember to um, convert it, and I am seeing my code here, is that I uh, I need the algorithm with by which the private key, the input private key, is encrypted, and after that, um, yeah, that was what I used to. So so and and you say it worked with RSA. Yeah. Did it also work with? Um, does it? Also work with uh, what do you mean? ED twenty five two five five one nine EC DSA and possibly DSA. Uh, it's uh, I'm quite interested. This is a new format. You are new. Only a four or five year old format used by OpenBSD. So the OpenSSH people. And this is a predecessor, I think, to it. 
and this one is an old and I believe almost deprecated. So, so I am using the Java security package and this is key factory, uh, which, which I have used to do this, but I, I have to look into it more to, to be able to answer that question. Okay, all right. Because if I remember yeah. correctly, um, oh, go ahead. Um, yeah, I, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, the key factory, I had, I have worked on that as, as well. I mean, there is a Java doc which tells which type of algorithms could be used in different types of classes. So there, I mean, the two, three to four algorithms are there in key factory. Then there is a key generator as well. And they have five to six algorithms for that. And, yeah. So the, yeah, so the way it is working is that we have to provide the algorithm. Algorithm, uh, yeah. Yeah, and the key spec, and that key spec would be uh, the, the type of format we want to convert our input key into. That is what I can see. Uh, if, I, if I share three yeah. lines of code, it's essentially captured, and I'll share them in the chat. Yeah, I mean, key spec is not a problem because it's an interface and there is no method implement method implementation or to override. So I have done that. I, I have implemented a class. I have uh, created a class which implements the key spec and and created method specific for our purpose. But uh, the main problem for me is to is the algorithm and the format. Okay, so I Harshad, I think there, uh, there are two, so I can see two implementation of those specs. One is for PKCS8 and one is for X509. So yes, maybe it's not for, uh, uh, okay. So the X509 encoded key space must be for the pen format or, uh, okay, that's, that is not always necessary. Well, but, but Harshad, you didn't, you said that the challenge was identifying the encryption but isn't isn't the encryption isn't the algorithm encoded in the heading of the private key file uh, no no that is what we i was see, also the, no if right. we see I think the, the dsa the one US. does though rsa definitely does it says begin rsa private key i just looked at one of my rsa private keys so I yes, think yeah. the if you if you create an ED uh, two five five one nine maybe even ECDSA, I think it'll yeah. include a header that looks like this. Yeah. Also, but I think the old ones just show what you're kind of showing there. Oh, oh, see, so these that I'm showing are not passphrase protected. That's correct. So these. These are not passphrase protected, but yeah, you're right. If I grab the one that is passphrase pr protected. Oh, and it says begin RSA. Yeah, mine says begin RSA private key. And then it continues with this. I actually stole that, that line from Stack Overflow instead of my, using my own private key. <laughs> so Justin, yeah. did you choose the specific format uh, algorithm? So I think by default, it does not um, encrypt it with RSA. So I well, I chose to pick an ED25519. In fact, GitHub is actually changing their direction to their instructions to use those as well. Yay! Best key ever. Good choice. Woohoo! BSD people are really serious. Open BSD people are really serious about their, their crypto. I mean, really serious. <laughs> so yeah, so you pass dash T. So here's the new, here's the GitHub guidance. And you basically pass dash T and you specify ED25519. I, yeah, I guess I could have put that in the doc, sorry. <laughs> and it, it, if you're in the dark ages, you have to use this other thing. Send us. That's the dark ages. You guess you guess where darkness lies. Very good. <laughs> okay, so so but but 
back to the question, I thought that this heading was was a known quantity to determine the type of the algorithm used to encrypt. But Harshit, you're saying it's in general not. Whoops! Why did you just change my our ed twenty five? Because uh, it's supposed to be like this. Oh, so picky. Okay, got uh, it. Sorry. Very good. Okay. So, so it actually does have RSA. It doesn't say OpenSSH. That's why I changed it. Well, okay. So then you're using an RSA key, not a not a, a an ed twenty five fifty nine two five five one nine. No, I'm fairly yeah. certain this is the ed two. Uh, I'm fairly certain that this is ED25519. Okay, what version of OpenSSH are you in? Well, let me check. Mine's 8.4. And it just calls itself begin OpenSSH, private key. And the next one is, hmm. so I guess, Harshit, what we're, what we're illustrating is that there are many, many ways to do this. But your second, line, your second and third line look like mine. I think that's the critical bit. Second and third line. This one? No, no I don't you have, have those lines in mind. Nope. My, my, let, I, let me generate a new one just to be sure. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do the same. I just generated one. And yeah, I just generated this one. Uh, ED25, and I, I solemnly promise never to use it. So I'm going to paste pretty much the whole <laughs> thing. Okay, so here it is. This is the... Whoops. Uh, ED25519. Public key. Looks like this. All one line. Okay, we're going to do micro font. Oh, okay. Oh. Whereas public private key, oops, has a heading that looks like this. And this is a passphrase protected key. So I'm not sure what to say about now that's an. ED2551519 protected passphrase protected private key. Let me try the same thing with RSA. So, uh, can we say that uh, all ED25519 protected private keys are always going to be like this? Because I, I was also under the assumption that the header would include the information about the algorithm. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I, I, I think. Because if we can consolidate that fact, then yeah, yeah, Hashi could. Make I mean, I can, I can certainly do checks. We've got, I've got access to lots of systems where I can do the checks to, to see what format they take. So, so that's, that's a survey that, well, and actually Harsh, you've got access to CentOS, you said, right? So you could, you could certainly check the boundaries you've got an, I remember right, you've got an Ubuntu system or a Debian that would be relatively yeah. modern. And then CentOS, if you've got CentOS 7, it's about as old as we're going to get. Uh, please feel free to laugh at me. Uh, you're correct, Mark. Um, I was on the wrong machine. <laughs> oh, good. I like that. OK, that's a relief, actually. <laughs> yes, I was like, what? Because I saw what you said, and I was like, yeah, I think he's right here. What's going on? Wrong machine. So let me check for just, okay. So ED25519. Okay, and then now even, okay. So I don't see the prototype think... four on mine, but it may be because of my version number, my even for RSA. So this one, I think, is a passphrase, and I don't remember which. 
cipher I used. Okay. I may have used um Yeah. I think I just used a strong um Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you just use 4096 bits probably. Okay. Yeah, and so Harshit, I'm not sure we're helping much in terms of you've got we've we've got a challenge here. The challenge is still how do we deal with passphrase protected private keys? And I think you've is your sense that you've found a solution through the, the convert to PEM and then use Bouncy Castle, or I assume that'll require that you call SSH keygen from the command line? Mm, yeah, I was previously doing this only, but I mean, this is not, this is a tentative solution and the user might not have the SSH keygen utility or the open SSH keygen utility. He might, he, they might have used just uh, got the private key and just pasted it in the Jenkins credentials. So, I mean, this is just a tentative solution as such keygen. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm open to e that tentative solution even now because it's perfectly okay for us to say you must have, I think it's okay anyway for us to say you need to have SSH installed on your image so that we can use it. We've gotta be able, I mean, actually, I guess I, I should say it differently they already have to have SSH installed, at least enough of SSH that, that Git can use SSH for transport. So I think this is actually pretty safe, if, even if you had to do it long-term. It's not, not especially pretty forking a separate process to do conversion, but we could conceivably limit the number of times we do it Um, so okay. is that key that ID, IDS RSA key on the convert to PEM format? Is that like, so I, I did notice that if you use the ED2559, it wants to store your key in ID, sorry. Yeah, ID underscore ED25519 as a default rather than ID RSA. Right. And, so that and that's the typo. It, it, well, for ED25519, you just change the file name. Yeah. Yeah, this one, this one is the, the, the example here I took as how to do it with an RSA key. You'd use the same thing, but change it to do it with, with uh, ID, ED25519. Oh, interesting. Okay, do convert to PEM, can't convert, on my system anyway, can't convert an OpenBSD format, uh, an ED25519. But it can convert an RSA. Although that looks an awful lot like an RSA key. Okay, so Harshit, you're you're exploring the right place. This looks complicated. So any other questions on crypto and crypto algorithms? Well, I was thinking if we cannot figure this out, we can fall back to the previous method where, that we are using in the Git client, client plugin right now. Yeah, and that was the uh, answer, the terminal prompt. with a separate file that's what you're meaning i think isn't it harsh mm, yeah like there will be 
uh, now how many like three separate files for passes projected protected keys if we right. using git ssh yeah i think i think that's reasonable we've got a you've got a, a plan as to how to handle it we would prefer the simpler we would prefer the more elegant way if the elegant way doesn't work then we can fall back to the the old way good okay any other topics so, uh, on oh go ahead so i mean like we are are we asking the user to convert the key for us or do we have to use the git like there is a launch command option as well in git client plugin i have not tested it but uh, using that we have to use the perform the ssh operation to convert the key into pem format i assume that the plugin would do the conversion because the user already has private keys stored in their system. Yes, yeah, so the conversion will be using SSH keygen. Yes. Mm, okay. And the problem is SSH keygen for certain key types Oops. Fails for fails with for ED two five five one nine. So it can't do a convert to PEM. And I assume that may be because there isn't a PEM format to support the OpenBSD format. Okay, so next steps then for you, Harshit. What's what's your plan next? Currently, I was holding this back, and I was working on the, I mean the, Git user password credential binding for Windows. Ah, okay. So that's a a good one to report on. Should we go there and hear how that's how that's doing? So. Username password binding on Windows. Share with us how it's going. I have not, I am like, I have just read the, well, I have not started that much. Like, I have just read the Git implementation of Windows in the Windows credentials, and I'm like figuring it out right now. Okay. Great. All right. Uh, I mean, like I spent two days working on that only. So, <laughs> and on the, yeah, yeah the SSH binding. Well, and, and that's there, it's obviously a complicated area. So yes, absolutely. Okay, any any other questions or topics we need to discuss today? We we did have this topic that we need to before end of community bonding period, I think we want you to get an updated description of the project onto Jenkins.io. See if I can find the pages where those go. Uh... I mean, I will, uh, the, uh, we will update the doc only after when I have figured out that the Bouncy Castle API is working fine. Okay. I, I just, my thought was 
it's probably good for you to, to po post something there sooner. Uh, well, oh. I would think before we conclude community bonding on the 7th, that'd be good just to show, hey, here's the progress we've made so far. Um, here's what we've got. But that's still six days away, so you or five days away, so you've still got time. So, um, what changes do I have to make in that? Uh, well, I think I think the goal would be share either your design document or your ideas of or the the results of your exploring. You know, basically, it's a a post to describe. Here, let me look and see. Just I've got to see what others are doing. Just a minute, GitHub. Jenkins.io. I think we yeah, just think had a post. No, where is it? Aki. Ah, uh, no, that's not it. Aki dash seven. Okay. So maybe I'm mistaken. Uh, let's see. So what have we got here? Yeah, so Oleg had PR'd, I think, um, a version of the new sites. Ah, yes, here it was. Update the GSOC 2021 remote monitoring project page. So here's the example, right? And this one is the projects page showing, oh, okay, that's a fairly simple update. So this is not a large scale update. And this one, also pretty simple. Okay, good. All right, so none of these are huge, Harshid. All that these two updates did was correct minor errors in the original pages. So let me paste a link to those as examples. Yeah, and then kind of for the rest of the project, you'll kind of keep that up to date with timelines and that's where we'll post like your blog post updates and stuff like that. Right. Uh, likewise, probably want to plan for a demo after first demonstration after first release or after you know at at, at some progress point uh, those have typically been in jenkins online meetups if i remember right and usually as a group uh, multiple multiple projects present in a single meetup I'm 10 to 15 minutes each are we What's talking that? about the phase one evaluations or is it before that? Is this before uh, that? I think I think this is probably at the end of phase one is where I'm guessing for sure it will be at the end of phase two. Oh. Yeah, the, these are absolutely this is later. So maybe what we should say here is phase phase one end or possible or phase two end and possibly earlier we'll need a blog post and demonstration and because did Rishab didn't last year we have you do two different demonstrations there were two two points where we had you do join a meeting and show i uh, actually we have we had three um, i think evaluations last time phase yeah, one phase two and then the final one Right, and certainly phase evaluations. I wasn't sure, did we do a demonstration at each of the phases? Yes, we did. Ah, okay, so then you should plan the same, that phase one end, demonstration, and 10 to 15 minute with a demo in a 10 to 15 minute talk. And same for at phase two end. Great. Uh, 
And Harshit, you're okay with that? Mm, yeah. Great. Any other topics we should be sure we discuss today? Um, if there's none, I want to come back to the PEM file conversion from the P factory thing. So okay. So uh, my if uh, so my my question is that or what I'm seeing is that um, the PEM format is essentially a base 64 translation of X509 keys. So, so if, if I'm not wrong about that, then um, I can see that, uh, so what Harshit was talking about, the key spec and the algorithm required for us to convert it uh, into PEM. So let's say we know the algorithm um, I can see that there are two default implementations for the key spec. One is for the PKCS8 format. The other one is um, for the X509 format key spec. If we are able to do that and then we um, encode it with the base 64, will we reach with a PEM format uh, private key? Is something I, I want to, I don't know, explore or am I saying something wrong there? Um, okay, so I guess I I just want to ask: is is there is there a conceptual mistake I'm making when I'm saying all of this? I I didn't hear any conceptual mistake, but I'm not a not a crypto expert. Say it again. So, so what I mean is that uh, this the code I shared here is 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 a way where where I converted the um, RSA encoded private key into a PKCS encoded key. Which was then I, I used that to store it into a key store. That is how I used it. Now what I'm saying is that um, it requires two things for for the conversion. The first is the algorithm, which I, I haven't shared, but it was essentially RSA. In my case, I knew that, and it was always going to be the same case. Let's say we know the algorithm. Um, we are sure that we can understand which algorithm. Um, is used to encrypt the input key we will have. The second thing is about the key spec and both of those things are used to generate a private key programmatically using the key factory. So I can see two default implementations in the Java security package for the key spec. The first is for the PKCS8 format and the second one is the X509 format. So uh, from what I know about PEM format, it is a base 64 translation of the X509 uh, key. If, if that is not wrong, then essentially what we have to do is to convert this using the key spec of K, uh, X509 and then base 64 encoded. If we do that, then do we arrive? Well, I, I'm not sure if that is the correct hypothesis, but that's what I'm thinking. Do we arrive at a PEM format? Uh, so, yeah, maybe I should try it first. Yeah, not sure. So you, well, okay, you were saying if, if, since PEM is at base 64 encoded, your question was, if you convert PKCS8 to base 64 encoded format, do you get PEM? Uh, not not PKCS format, but X509. Oh, sorry, X509. So if you convert X509 to basic, and, and that I do not know. Yeah, that, that's way beyond my depth. I think it, it's a simple experiment considering that we already have SSH keygen, uh, a way to convert it. I can just use this and then compare both of them. If I'm arriving at the same conclusion, then I... Um, could be a way to programmatically convert the keys into PEM format. I, I, I think I, I should explore share a few it. links yeah. of the articles and I could share a few links like that will be helpful. So everyone on the same page, can I? Okay. Sure, sure. Yeah.
Should I say in the chat? In the chat would be great, or you can paste them in the document. Either would be fine. I'll, if you paste them in the chat, I promise to copy them into the document. Okay. Okay, so, so if we do not find a way to programmatically do this, I mean, using a Java library, then we are defaulting to using SSH keygen, right? That's, that's my understanding. Okay. And if okay. we can't do it with SSH keygen, we have to fall back to do the, the, the terminal dance that is done by the Git client plugin today. So we, we, we do have uh, two ways to fall back to. Yeah, so now Harshit, you, did you have other links? Because there's this link from Stack Exchange that talks about a Java implementation of ED25519 However, I have no idea how good or bad that Java implementation is, or it's, oh, it's released to the public domain. So at least it is um, available. But again, no idea how strong or weak it is. See, here is a. Okay, now, now wait a sec. Okay, so here's another one for, as a question. Harshit, you might want to look at this one, which talks about generating ED25519 private key parameters. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not sure what version of Bouncy Castle that requires. It says 1.63. Okay, where do I find the Bouncy Castle uh, Java doc? Okay, so apparently it's not in here, ED25519. Oh no, there it is, ED25, okay, so there is, at least Bouncy Castle has the concept of it. Interesting, okay, so, so, so this, now if it's got ED25519, I would assume it also has RSA private key. RSE private key structure. Yeah, so, so and Harshit, you had investigated using Bouncy Castle, but it doesn't, did it not? Oh, wait a sec. BC Prov. Okay, BC Prov. I don't know which one I'm looking at. So, so my worry is this may be too new. They're at eight, right? JDK eight. Do you see a JDK eight? I'm not seeing it. Mm -hmm. 16, 15, 14, FIBS. 
nothing in the FIPS. Okay, but there is an RSA private key. Huh. Okay, so so I don't, I'm just, I'm not helping here at all, I'm afraid. I'm just doing wild guesses. Excuse my distraction. No, but I so, think it's... Uh... Worth investigating. I, I'm sure Harshit has investigated it. Also, uh, mm, but if we see, um, yeah. Yes, Harshit. Um, sorry for that. I mean, like, Mark, you opened the Java doc of Bouncy Castle API. Uh, was it of Jenkins or the Bouncy Castle API only? This was the Bouncy Castle API for, for Bouncy Castle itself. And it's, it's a version that I don't know what it, it's actually expressing here, Harshit. And I apologize that I'm not familiar with that, but this looks like it's the Bouncy Castle API for, or Javadoc for various versions of it. And I think I read that we're running, I guess I should be able to look it up, shouldn't I? someplace inside Jenkins, there will be a reference to Bouncy Castle. Okay, it's in the Bouncy Castle API plugin. That appears to be a 1.54, maybe. Okay, now how did you decode that? So I, I'm looking at the plugin page. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, you're there. So this. But that's instance identity module. So I'm not sure if that's the same. Yeah, so how about if we look here inside yeah. this thing's palm, I would expect it's got a reference to. BC something or other. Okay. Yeah, there it is. So it's using BCK, BCPKIX JDK 15 ON 1.68. So that is the current version. So, so I think it's worth exploring further to see if you can use let's see ED25, okay. Hmm. No, this version of it doesn't seem to have it. Where did I find? Hmm. It was in. Hmm. Oh, it's spelled wrong. And this one is in BCPROV-EXT, whatever that means. So I'm going to speculate that BCPROV, this one. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so there there does seem to be a Bouncy Castle library that provides it. I'm just not sure if we can use it. So Harshit, I assume you're okay if I embed a link to this into our into our notes in hopes yeah. that it'll help you somehow. So we can directly add Bouncy Castle API as a dependency to get client plugin, right? So we can use our own version. Why would we? 
we well we we can except I worry that that I don't know what what this one means that particular what does PROV mean in this case is that provisional is that um, so something there's there's some concept there that I don't think I've ever seen that reference and so that would be something just to check to be safeguarded to see okay did it does it in fact do what we want and will it can we use it but let's put the let's put the reference into the document we want to reference to the um, we want to take the bouncing api plugins um, dependency as a reference because that we know has been tested within the jenkins environment we know it's safe right exactly but so the idea then the question is but that is probably not inside the uh, bouncy castle api plugin and that we should be able to check right just to to do a quick look. Okay, here, if we look at what's included in its POM file, it's only got that single library right now. Now, that doesn't stop us from using it. That doesn't prevent it. It's just, it means we've got it. it Harshit would have to do some more research to be sure is is it okay that we include that inside Jenkins and does it solve the problem? It may not solve the problem. If it doesn't meet the needs, then including it in Jenkins is irrelevant. But Harsha, it seems worth it if you can stand to do the exploration, to do some exploration around this particular API and see if it'll help. Okay. Yeah. This is for specifically, uh, mean. This ED, particular one, EDR yeah, this one is, is specifically for the ED25519, which is the open SSH format. And then there's our open SSH encryption. And then there is another one for RSA. Oops, not that. And if we keep looking here, we should see RSA private key. So here's the one for RSA. And I bet there is also one for DSA. Yeah, here's the DSA one. And I would bet there's one for ECDSA. Yeah, here it is, ECDSA public key. So, so it looks like there, there is at least some representation in this, in the, in this particular library, BC Prove, EXT, JDK 15ON, um, that might be helpful. But uh, using that won't be requiring the knowledge that we know the algorithm Oh no, I think I think it will require that we know the algorithm, but I think you can I'm I'm reasonably confident you can determine the algorithm by looking at the the header of the file. Like open SSH keys, uh, sorry, open the key gen generate keys by headers open SSH open SSH private key. So I am not sure if the headers could help us. Yeah, well, and, and what open SSH private key means is that's the open SSH format and open SSH format uses ED25519. And no, for the other formats, such it, we would have the headers. That's what uh, Justin was initially showing us, right? By default, right. Uh, I mean, uh, as I'm reading the key access in, in manual, it says by default it will generate keys in RSA 
algorithm. Uh, and that is that is what's done by default until um, I think OpenSSH on on OpenBSD now has changed that. Let me go look just to be sure. That's where they do their leading, their leading edge development. Oh yes, here it is. Okay, so now it says SSH key gen will by default write keys in an open SSH specific format. It is still possible to write them in PIM. No, that doesn't tell me if they're always ED two five one. 25519. Oh, and there are even new formats, dash SK. Okay, so I can't tell which. So by default, mine's doing a, an RSA key. Even with the most recent OpenBSD. And if it is so, uh, an RSA key, then we would have, uh, uh, the header would contain that information, right? It would not be open It, it would. Right? Right, so SS, so if we do SSH key gen minus T RSA minus F. This will generate the private key. And now we're going to look at it. Oh, I made a terrible mistake, that's good, okay. Here's the begin open SSH private key that's RSA, how can it, okay. So that, uh, I think I see your point, Harsha. It just generated a key that it says is open SSH private key, but it's definitely not ED25519 format. Yeah. So, so now I assume what we have to do is something like this, where we say, Back to your, it was minus E minus M, Pam? Minus M, yeah, Pam. And now it's generated something that explicitly declares itself to be an RSA public key. And then, yeah. now where did the private key go? So that's, yeah. So more to be done there. I mean, if we are able to generate into PAM format, then there's no need to know the algorithm like Bombs Castle supports PAM format. So it's easy for us from there. Okay, all right. So the complication then continues with how do we get it into PAM format for all the things? And if we can't do PAM format as ED25519 seems like we can't, then how do we handle those keys? And it may be that the initial, okay, good. I think, I think I see where you're headed. Any other topics for discussion today? Oh, our next session. Actually, next session is a crucial thing. When do we want to meet next? How does your Friday look? Uh, Harshit and Rishab. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I'll be available. Yeah, it's fine by me. And Justin, does your Thursday night at this same time work okay? I'm no good this Thursday night again. Okay, and we don't have Marky. Did Marky Jackson talk with you? Uh, with me? No. No, okay, so Marky, Marky Jackson had expressed interest in being one of the mentors. Nice. 
yeah, I thought that would be great, but yeah. I've invited him to this meeting and he didn't make it and he didn't make it to last Friday's either. Okay, he declined today's, so that's fine. But we really do need him. It, well, it would be great to have him. He certainly got experience with Git. Okay, so two days from now then, uh, okay with everybody? Yeah. Yeah, feel free to go, with, go ahead without me. Um, I will do the same follow up. All right. Okay. And that, that, then I'll have one more meeting next week and then I'm offline. I wonder so, if Marky had a problem with, uh, with time. He had said that it was okay with him, but it oh, could, okay. he, might, he may have, he may have had a problem. Absolutely. I mean, personal schedules are what they are. So I'm going to send everybody an invitation for two days from now, same time. Cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. Anything else before we close? Um, I just wanted to say that, uh, so we were going to explore uh, Okay, so we're going to explore the validity of uh, the possibility of converting uh, uh, the different algorithms privately into pen, right? Or we're abandoning the idea right now. I think that Harshit intends to explore converting the various algorithms to PEM so that he can use Bouncy Castle. Harshit, did I understand correctly? No, that's that's not that's not my plan B. My plan A is using the SSH keygen from ah. the Git client plugin using launch command function uh, functionality that it provides. Okay, great. So let me make because okay. that's what you've got working now. I mean, I did the research on working on converting the formats, but I didn't come up to a conclusion. So I think that should be for me the plan B instead of pursuing it further and maybe delaying the, it will be delaying. I mean, it will be delaying the progress. Okay. So SSH keygen is really the preferred path. So Rishab, if you've got additional data that can help Harshit, you're certainly welcome to share it and, and I'm sure suggest alternatives. Yeah, I think I'm going to investigate a little bit before you know, saying more on that because I, I, I do need to uh, look into uh, the bouncing as API and the possibilities because Harshit has done the investigation. I think I, I'm just going to look around a little bit. Okay. I, I also want to explore the concept of using PKCSA um, format to store private keys. Mm. I mean, I'm not sure if instead using it instead of pen is something we can do. I just want to look at that. Uh, any other topics? Be, oh, go ahead, Rishab. No, no, no. I, I was just saying, yeah, that's that's what I'm trying. I, I'll try to do, and I'll report on Friday if you know if, if I have something I mean, about Friday. Great. Anything else? No, thank you. All right, thanks everybody. I'll post recordings uh, shortly. Uh, the recording from last session, I think I already posted, but if not, my apologies, I'll try to get it done. Talk to you in two days. Thanks. Take care. Bye.